Hello, I'm Joan Manson of Manson Fine Art. Thank you for joining me today as I share with you another episode of Sometimes Color Gets in the Way. I use this photograph that I took of a hair when I was living out in Colorado. I changed it to uh, black and white because the work I'm doing is in black and white. And this is the result. I used a white charcoal pencil from Gem. I've traced out and drawn in the image with a General's white chalk pencil. And I'll be using that pencil for most of the work that I'm doing today. I'm using Derwent black paper. It's a smooth as a bristle and probably will work much better with colored pencil than it does with the pastel. Just the tiniest bit too, sl too slick and not quite enough tooth. Um, to grab the pencil the way I would like it. So I had to do a lot more repeat, repeating of color in order to make the white stand out a bit more. I did most of this work with that pencil. I did use a bit of the pan, white pan pastel I applied some of it to the back with a sponge applicator and I used the Tombow Micro Mono eraser for bringing in more of the black in the background while I was working on the hair. Here I'm working on the white area around the eye. And I'm just working in short strokes, uh, very quick. A little more pressure than I normally would have done on a different paper, but not that much pressure. This project was barely 30 minutes long, and it, I hadn't been able to really work for about uh, a week and a half, two weeks. While I was redoing my studio space, I ordered a new drafting board. I was moving things in and out, reorganizing, eliminating, gave away a lot of art supplies. Um, and as I did last year at this time, I'm reverting to working only in black and white. And then I'll bring in color again in a couple of months. But I'm going to try to keep that color on soft tones. I tend to burn out somehow with too much color and I feel so comforted going back to black and white to graphite pencils and water soluble graphite and I think I'll just be adding the graphite tins for color there for the beginning and work my way back up. I'm still working with pan pastels and soft pastels but, but right now I want to work a very limited palette like the Zorn palette with a little uh, extra blue because the Zorn palette doesn't come with blue. But for a while now you'll be seeing a lot of black and white work. Short strokes, very quick short strokes. I found this problem with color started when I was living out in Santa Fe for a very brief period of time because I, I couldn't get a job and then ended up moving to Colorado and then back to Florida. But um, there came times when I'd step into a store because there is so much color in Santa Fe. It's any store, a clothing store, a museum, a, a card shop. There's just too much color and it took over my senses and I really could feel it was taking, it was taking over and I needed to just get home to my apartment and and clear my head and my senses. And then I see that happening as I work with color. I love works done in beautiful bright colors, um, but it becomes an issue for me. And sometimes, as the name of the series, color gets in the way. But I love working with pencil. I love working with white on black and black on white. I like working with tone papers and graphite pencils. 
and I'll still be doing things with white pen pastel and pastel white pastel chalk, but the idea is black and white. And this rabbit just came so quickly to me. Of course, I do believe it's because rabbit is one of my power animals, one of my spirit animals. I've been seeing constantly images of rabbits on visiting other artists on my Instagram account and my Facebook account. Every time I pop something up, a rabbit would show up and I said, okay. <laughs> uh, rabbit, besides being... Uh, a symbol of fertility since they do multiply so quickly is also uh, can can be for some people an indication of fear or a reason to run but for me rabbit is more than that rabbit is an indication that creativity is abounding and for me the message was you need to get back to creating you need to be get back to the art you've been away from it for too long And for me, two weeks is, and I did a little sketching and doodling, but I didn't sit down properly. And there was so much of my energy was, was concentrated on trying to work out my space. But I did it. I have my workspace. I took down the art that belonged to other people in my studio space, and I have only hanging uh, paintings that I did. Although I don't paint anymore, except occasionally with watercolor, I do have acrylics that I did, and I have those hanging up around the room. Not too many. Also, my camera setup is a little bit different. Right now, I have the camera on a tripod as I used to do in the earlier days. I prefer having it overhead, but the overhead camera arm that I ordered was too low, so I ordered another. And when it comes, I'll go back to the other way. Although this one isn't too bad, I don't think. You'll have to tell me. Um, And I have a new table lamp that clips to the drafting board. Since it's a drafting board on a tilt, everything has to clip to it. It's still just going over and over with short strokes of the charcoal pencil. Which very nicely comes with an eraser, which, did, which I didn't use because it never occurred to me to use the eraser on the end of the pencil. Oh well. I was just so involved in following the light and drawing in the hairs on, on the hair. Now, I took this particular photograph when I was living out in Four Corners, Colorado. I used to visit the uh, Anasazi um, historic site, and there was a little bit of wildlife there, chickmunks and rabbits. Occasionally, they'd say there was a cougar out there or a a panther, um, and once I nearly got clipped by a deer jumping the hedges. That one day I saw the hare and took several photos of it, and I'll be doing a couple of more, or at least one more video. But I'm going to be using a Canson black pastel paper instead, and again, the uh, White past, the white pastel and chalk pencils and a little bit of the pan pastel. And of course I have the black charcoal for filling in areas where I need to bring in a little darker black for contrast. And I'm going back over the areas that are a little bit lighter and adding more of the white.
This is a very nice paper. Um, I don't mean to put it down. It just isn't something that for me seems to work well with chalk or pastel. Um, it's just too slick. It's like working on a Brist on Bristol board. But in the end, I used a little bit of uh, Derwent's Chinese white drawing pencil to bring out a little more white, and that went on beautifully. So I, I'm going to hold on to this and try using it with my Derwent Light Fast colored pencils. I have a small set of those. I I, kept, I have small sets of several things um, to use. I've given away lots of my larger sets, but I have all of my my 120 Faber-Castell watercolor pencils, and I to use over water soluble graphite. And I have my 72 pencil Derwent pastel pencil set. And, um, of course, a, a full Sennelier soft chalk, uh, pastel chalk collection. And I have graphite tints and char XL charcoal and XL graphite. And a metallic pastel pencils. So I'm, I'm all set. I was very careful this time about what I gave away. And um, what I gave away for the most part were smaller sets of the ones I wanted made larger sets and um, markers that I just know I won't use. So it was a nice benefit to uh, two or three friends of mine who are also artists. I gave away boards that I wouldn't be using. and uh, watercolor paper that I wouldn't be using because I have sheets, huge uh, 24 by 30 inch sheets of, of uh, watercolor paper and lots of smaller watercolor pads. Uh, and I prefer the hot press when I do watercolor to the cold press. I like a smoother surface. Now I'm using my triangular applicator and the pastels, the pan pastel to apply a light coat over the back. I'll be adding, of course, more short lines for the hair, but I don't want it to go against stark black. I'll be making some erasure marks to, to bring up some differentiation and some contrast, but I don't want it to be a stark contrast. And it's just amazing how quickly you can move. And I, I recommend working white on black or black on white with a pastel or a, or a charcoal pencil. Um, if you have trouble with arthritis, your hands tire too easily because you can complete the work in one sitting um, in under half an hour or under, depending upon how large or how complicated the image you're doing but about a half an hour and you'll be done which is really wonderful and you've created uh, something really beautiful and lest i forget to remind everybody as i like to remind people and this i don't know whether or not you follow spiritual uh, teachings um, such as the raw collective but one of their message, actually I asked a question about art and I was told that every time I worked on art, I was helping to raise the vibration of the planet. So whenever you're out there drawing, whether it comes out good or bad, whether what you're painting or sculpting or carving, whatever you're doing, when you're involved in a creative pursuit, keep in mind that you are helping to raise the spiritual vibration of the planet. And that is a wonderful occupation.
and I'm going back over again making a, causing a little bit more pressure still short lines because the hair has short hair H-A-I-R there are long-haired rabbits and a lot of beautiful breeds as there are with cats and dogs but this is a beautiful natural hair I'm also working with a lavalier uh, microphone, which was recommended to me by the people at Skillshare. I teach some classes on using pan pastels over there, and I will be teaching more classes. We'll see how this works. When I run through the edit and listen to everything, I'll see how well it came out, and if I thought it was good, and I hope it was. I don't know what kind of environment other people like to work in. I know some people like to listen to music, and some people like to listen to books, uh, audiobooks, and uh, some people like to sit in silence. I like to sit in silence when I work, and I try to narrate while I'm working and then stop because I'm so involved in what I'm doing with my hand on the paper. and. I forget to talk, which is highly <laughs> it's kind of strange for me because I make my living talking. I uh, am a professional reference librarian, and I answer questions all day long and help people on their computers, and I'm constantly talking. But when I'm creating, I love the silence. And my focus is only on what I'm doing. And sometimes my focus is on whatever message my subject has for me. And I guess because the rabbit is a fast creature, the project went more quickly as well. I don't know. Um, I'm hoping that everybody who sees this will enjoy it and feel inspired to pick up a pencil and... Uh, and just try something simple to break up their day, whether you're a professional artist or an amateur artist, or you just like watching videos because they're relaxing. I've started following several new artists who um, I follow on Instagram and who are nice enough to follow me back, but I've discovered so many artists from around the world who do incredibly beautiful work and it is inspiring so wherever I see any of them on YouTube whether I can understand their language or not it's not important um, I, I love watching what they do and how they do it and with a couple of decades or four decades of experience um, I can pretty much tell what somebody is doing by watching they don't really have to tell me And I'm sure that's, that's the same for a lot of, a lot of you out there. So you can just sound, turn the sound off and watch my hands move. And you're still using that same pencil. And in general, it makes very good uh, white charcoal and 
white chalk pencils and charcoal and blocks and, and vines, and they're not a lot of money. Uh, they're good quality. And you can, I don't think there's an office supply or art supply store that doesn't carry them. Plus, you can get them online from Amazon, Dick Blick, Jerry's Arirama, Cheap Joe's, uh, and anybody else who's out there with, a, with an online store. Sam Flax sells them. And, um, and if you're just experimenting, it's really a great way to go. You don't have to buy a lot of materials. I have more charcoal pencils, black charcoal pencils, than, than I need for uh, five or six years. I experimented with the, the hardnesses. I've got some that are hard and some that are soft. So I like to experiment. And that drives me a lot too. I, I've used a lot of different uh, medium, given away a lot of different media because that was fine. I tried it, but I, I wasn't happy with it. And I have ordered a liquid charcoal which I'm hoping will be coming this next week. It works like watercolor or gouache, I'm not sure uh, how transparent or translucent it is until I try it. But I'm really looking forward to experimenting with that to see how it's working. And I might work uh, pastels on top of that. Or I might just work with it alone the way I would with watercolor, but doing everything in shades of gray. And I also have black watercolor paper. So I can use that as well as white to, to create a work if I'd like to experiment with that. And if I do, I'll share that with you. But I'm looking forward to getting that liquid charcoal and I'm looking forward to a project I can share with you. I think you can finally see the little rows of hair showing up on the side and the back of the rabbit. And it may not be correct, but I use rabbit and hair interchangeably. I'm going to bring in the black charcoal and add a little bit more contrast in a few areas. And now I'm going to use the eraser instead and bring up the black of the paper. And that is the Tombow Mono Eraser. It's uh, pretty thin, about two millimeters. And it takes away... Um, this paper erases really beautifully. No problem with erasing on this paper. As I said, I don't want to disparage the Derwent black drawing paper. Um, every paper isn't for everything, but I'm very pleased with my purchase, and I'm very happy to have it as part of my paper collection. And then as part of my paper collection, I've added uh, an 11 by 14 and 14 by 18 pad of Strathmore 400 series smooth because I wanted something a little stronger for my graphite drawings. I have lots of watercolor paper when I want to use water soluble graphites, but I wanted a better quality, stronger quality paper than, than the standard drawing paper. And I also have Strathmore's Art Again black paper that I use too. I, that's an ex, it's excellent quality. Works very well with pastels and colored pencils. Although I don't do that much with colored pencils. I, okay. 
I'm using my favorite blending tool, my fingertips. I have blending stumps sitting there. <laughs> and I bought these new tools for blending. Um, they're, they look like sculpting tools. They're, um, they're called pastel blending tools. And they're uh, silicone. And you blend the pastels and the charcoals the same way you would with your blending stump. But I haven't actually had the chance to use them. I am going to try to incorporate that in my next project. I want at least to see how they work. That doesn't matter. I never give away my tools. You never know when they're going to be of use to you. I keep all my erasers and all my blending tools and all of my brushes. Just in case. I have a very nice set of cosmetic brushes from Eco that I use for applying pastels as well as the sponge applicators. So I'm set here. And it's worse came to worse. And all the art supply stores had to close their door for a few months, I would be fine. I wouldn't be happy in case I discovered a new paper or a new tool or a new medium, but I would be, I would be secure in the knowledge that I can still create. And the fact of the matter is, if I'm down to nothing, if I have a piece of paper and a number two pencil, my life is complete. Probably most of us started with a number two pencil on a, a piece of paper, a drawing pad. And of course, the, our Crayola crayons and coloring books. And this is a, a Karen Dash Jazz Pencil. It's um, not really a charcoal pencil. Uh, it's, a little so, it's, um, it's, very, it's a very hard color pencil. I was just trying to find something to work to darken, or darken, make whiter uh, some of the furs on the edge of the black. And um, it did all right, but it wasn't quite strong enough for me. So in the end, I picked up the uh, the Derwent Chinese white drawing pencil, which is probably the strongest white. And if you don't own one and you work with colored pencils or um, pastel pencils or, or anything, it is a wonderful addition to your collection. You don't need to buy the entire set of drawing pencils unless you want to do that. And the entire sets are geared toward drawing nature. Uh, drawing animals, but that white pencil is so strong and works with most other pencils. It is well worth the investment of, a, I guess it would be four or five dollars for the single pencil. still working with the jazz, the Karen Dash. And then I brought back the charcoal because I'm still not happy with that white. And here comes the Derwent Chinese white pencil. Just short, choppy uh, marks 
to bring out that hair and it works over the pastel and it works over other color pencils and it works over watercolor pencils. Now I'm working on the eye to add a little more white. I just love this pose in animals. Dogs and cats do this as well. They, they groom their feet and their legs. It's so sweet and so innocent. Uh, now I'm running out of space on my video and I, when I came back I forgot to put it back on. I did do a little bit more touch up on the back of the ears. I made them a little bit lighter and I uh, put grass in front of the rabbit. You can see that in the final work. And I'm signing it. There you can see that I've added the grass and a little bit more detailing. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to working with you again. If you like this video and want to see more, please click on the like and subscribe and the bell.